will be limited on this, so uh, let's try to get them loaded and get out of here as uh, soon as possible after service. Can you say amen? Amen. Because they close at four o'clock our time, so we gotta we gotta hustle. We want them to be able to eat and then uh, spend some time in the arcade. All right. Hallelujah. Brother Philip, you want to come and open this in prayer? Sure. So I've been listening to this song, and do you know it's called Dancing on the Waves, and there's a verse in that song that says, I dare you to believe how much I love you. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much he loves you? Have you forgotten how much he loves you? Every morning when you get up out of bed, tell yourself, he loves me more than anything, anything in the world. Yeah. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ on the cross. Thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. If there's anyone who comes in here today, we pray that you bring them forward to be saved. We're going to thank you for the one who gave their heart to you last week. They lift up your name, lift up your name today, glorify your name. Worship you. Pray for all your love, mercy, and grace, and your goodness to be with us today. We worship. In Jesus' name we pray. In the church said, Amen. Amen. We're going to do something a little bit different this morning. If everybody can stand up, please. And if you are 12 years old or younger, I want you up here. Come on. Get up here. I'm going to stand here. Y'all stand here and look at me. So, four, one. so you're all going to stand this way in a line. Okay? Like this. Stand like cadence and look at me. Now spread out. Arms like spread out. You guys can stand like, someone can stand kind of behind right there too. All right, good. Okay, you're going to follow what I do. So just keep your eyes on me, and you're going to do what I do, okay? And if all the adults can do it too, then we won't feel left out. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs>
You are all. 
Turning to Proverbs chapter 3. You don't have to stand this morning because actually the same verse I'm using here will be the same verse that we will use to minister from this morning. But John and Elaine I want to share with you their new son and dedicating him for the service of the Lord. So this morning... I'm going to be reading from Proverbs, the third chapter. Beginning in verse number one through verse 18. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the tablet of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. For it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance with the first fruits of all thy increase. So, thy, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as the father, the son, in whom he delighted. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof, than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days are in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is every one that retaineth her. If I could get John and Elaine to bring Benjamin forward at this time. So, you know, it's a uh, it's a privilege. You know, you know we, we don't believe in water sprinkling or baptizing babies. We don't believe this is anything. This is a commitment that this child will be raised in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And, you know, this may not require a similar sacrifice like Abraham who was required to take his own son Isaac and lay him on the altar and even take his life but God provided. It may not be like when Hannah had to take her son Samuel and leave him there at the temple of Eli to live out his days in service of God. But it's one that should be taken no less lightly in the fact that this child can be used in the service of the Lord. You know, Jesus demonstrated his love for children when he said for, to let the children suffer them to come unto me. Now I want to charge you, John and Elaine, the primary responsibility of Benjamin's course rests upon you. You're instructed to chain up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You're required to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. These commandments that I give today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. John and Elaine, as you engage in these tasks with joy and peace, may you earnestly seek the Lord daily for his wisdom, for all events that will occur, all the decisions to be made and all the needs to be met. 
For James instructed, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. May you also daily give thanks to God for your, for your son Benjamin and for the joy and love he brings to your life. And as he grows, may you earnestly strive to spend adequate time with him, developing him in a strong moral foundation for life and awareness of the Lordship of Christ and his abiding presence. Benjamin also has the benefit and influence by his extended family who are being asked to provide backup support for a spiritual training. At this time, I'd ask the family of Benjamin to stand. It's your responsibility to provide a caring, supportive group for this family. I ask you to be faithful in prayer for them and up undergird them their efforts to establish a strong Christian home built on Christian principles. And I urge you to demonstrate a real interest and concern for Benjamin as he grows physically, mentally, socially, and especially spiritually. However, there's one other agent of influence here today, and that's the church. And this time I'll ask the church to stand to give evidence of their part and their support and their responsibility. I charge you to do all that you can to provide it and support a place of worship. This community where Benjamin may hear the full counsel of God's word. I urge you to be faithful in providing programs for instruction and discipleship and to demonstrate kindness towards all our little ones. And I charge you to covenant before God to set an example by your lives to maintain an atmosphere in this church, which shall inspire Benjamin to desire the Christian way of life. Now, John and Lane, in the sight of God, in the presence of these witnesses, do you solemnly undertake to bring up Benjamin in the fear and admonition of the Lord? Do you promise early to seek to lead him to accept Jesus as Savior and serve him as Lord? Do you promise? As far as lies in you, as much as lies in you, set before your son examples of consistent godly living. You pledge to make your home a sanctuary where the presence of the Holy Ghost is evident. Minerva, would you take the child? Now, according to the authority in God's word, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we dedicate Benjamin unto the Lord and to his service according to his will. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you today for this child. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that in you we live and move and have our being. Lord, we just ask your presence upon this child. Lord God, that he will early be like Samuel. Lord God, to begin to understand and recognize the drawing and the voice of God. Lord, we pray that he'll understand the importance of having a relationship and live godly before you all the days of his life. Lord, that you'd raise him up to be a mighty man of valor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. You may give the child back to the lane. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. this morning. There's a verse that's probably quoted, you've quite, probably quoted to people. You've probably had it quoted to you. And that verse says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. You know, there was a time, there was a woman that she came to us and she had lost her son in a tragic car accident. If I mentioned the, the child's name, most of you would know him. And she was really struggling, as one could only imagine, has lost a child. And she was wanting to know how she could overcome this and how she could be free from the grief. And, and I told her, I said, listen, 
before I say anything to you, I'm not going to give you the same advice that you've already been given. She was attending a church, and I believe this church was trying to help her with everything they knew and understood, trying to help her. I said, but I can already tell you what you've been told. You've been told that you need to seek the Lord and that you need to trust Him with all your heart. And she said, how did you know that? I said, because it's the advice that we're all giving, which is good advice, good godly advice. But the problem is we're never taught how to trust God. It's one thing to tell somebody to trust in God. It's another thing to teach someone to trust in God. And it comes very hard for us, I understand, to trust because we've said things in our life like women will say, I can't trust any man. Or we live in a world that we say, well, you know, you just can't trust anybody anymore. You can't even trust a Christian to tell you the truth anymore. That's the world that we live in. And sadly, all those things are right to a certain degree. Man cannot be trusted. Many times we're told in Scripture not to put our trust in man or horses or chariots, but our trust is to be in the Lord. The problem is many times is, is because it's not that we don't trust God, it's that many times we think we can do better and take care of it more ourselves. You know, that's the reason what happened in mankind is in the shape they are today. When Genesis in chapter 3, we see the fall of man. It wasn't that they didn't believe God. It's that they didn't trust God to get the job done. When they heard the lie from the enemy that they would be gods or be like God and knowing good from evil, it took the trust from God and put it on themselves. And they decided that they could trust God and, and equally do as good as God and maybe even better. You know, isn't that the problem with most of us today? When something arises in our life, a challenge, a problem, a crisis, and they do arise, can you say amen? amen. We immediately want to go into fix-it mode. We want to go and take care of it instead of putting our trust upon the Lord. I believe that a lack of trust that Adam and Eve had in God and in His Word is a problem that has plagued mankind. Really, can we trace it back to being the part of the original sin? Is that they didn't wholeheartedly trust God. It's not that they didn't trust Him, but they didn't trust Him with their whole heart. And there is a difference. Can you say amen? amen. They took matters in their own head. Sound like anybody you know. If we are honest, we all struggle with this. We take matters into our own hands. And it usually never works out well. Maybe you've done that this week. Maybe you did it this year. Maybe that's all you've ever done. It took matters into your own hands instead of solely trusting in the Lord. We all struggle in this area. Whether you want to admit it or not this morning, we all struggle there. We doubt God's goodness. And then we become tormented by fear and anxiety. And we're always trying to fix what God is wanting to take care of for us within himself. And once again, I know that this trust can be difficult. So how do we trust God? Isn't that ultimately the scripture says that it will bring length of days and, and peace. Uh, the very things that we're all hoping for is all those promises and it begins by trusting the Lord and leading not to our own understanding but acknowledging Him and He shall direct our paths. Well the good news is we can trust God. And I know many of this, it comes to struggle. But what are some of the attributes? You know many of you here this morning have young children. And I, I would dare say that any of you would leave them with someone to watch them that you don't trust. You just wouldn't drop them off to a stranger's house and hope everything works out well. You would only leave them in the care of someone that you can trust. And how do you know you can trust them? It's because you know them personally. Amen. I know it's struggle for many times with parents and I get it. When you drop your kids off at a daycare. Or you drop your kids off for the first day of school. Because you really don't know these people personally. You know this person that you can trust is someone who is dependable. You know it's sad to say there's a lot of people who are gifted and even anointed of God but they're not dependable. 
They have calls upon their lives, but you can't depend on them for anything. Amen or oh me. You, you trust these people because you spent time with them and you know who they are and you know what they stand for. And that's the exact same way that you and I can know that we can trust God. You got to learn to get to know God personally. So we use this cliche to, to have a personal relationship or personally know God. And we, most of the time, we just equate that to, oh, yes, I'm saved, I'm, I'm born again, and I don't got to die and go to hell. And thank God that's the place you got to start, to know Him. But beyond that, you and I can know God. I'm not talking about any God. I'm talking about the God that created heaven and earth. You and I can know Him in a personal, intimate way. And the only way you'll ever trust Him is to have that intimate relationship. Can you say amen? amen. Have you ever dated someone that you couldn't trust? Maybe that broke your trust. Maybe they were unfaithful in a marriage. And I understand those can damper or hamper trust factors that we have. Maybe you were abused as a child. Maybe you were put down as a child. Maybe you did put your trust in somebody, some church, some pastor, some group of, of religious people. And they only let you down and broke that trust. But I've got good news. God is not like that. God is faithful to you and I. Can you say amen? You and I can know him. We have a God desires to have a close, personal relationship with you and I. He's not a distant God that you and I can't reach. He's not somewhere way off in the clouds that you and I can't find Him. The Bible declares that if we seek Him early, we shall find Him. When we search for Him with all of our heart, it all goes back to the heart. We, we search Him with all of our heart. We trust in Him with all of our heart. This is a heart thing. Can you say amen? He pursues us. He loves us. He wants to know us intimately. But do you want to know Him? See, many people just want to get out of hell free part. And they want to go through life living the hell they want. And they want to take care of things how they want to take care of them instead of trusting in God. The scripture tells in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 16, And we have known and believed that the love of God has toward us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwelleth in God and God in Him. Can you really say that love dwells within you? Now Jesus said in Luke 6, it's easy to love those that love you. That's no big deal. Sinners even do that. Sinners love those that love them. But we're to love our enemies. Love those that we feel that we can't trust. That maybe have broken our trust. That have broken our bond. It, look, we should not be shocked because Paul told Timothy in the last days a sign of, of perilous times and men would be truth breakers, covenant breakers. There's people that's going to break their trust. The, the people that you can't trust. But God is not one of them. Can you say amen? Simply because He loves you, you can trust Him. You say, well, I don't know if God loves me. I don't know if I can trust God. What was the last time I'm not talking about looking at this old cross, this, this a members, but I'm talking about what Jesus did on the cross. When was the last time that you actually looked and thought about what Jesus did? And then how could you walk away and wonder if he could be trusted? Or wonder if he loved you? Because the Romans tells us that he can't command it. He demonstrated his love toward us and then why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How much proof do you and I need that we can trust God? See, it's not... God's the problem. It's us of letting go. Because once again, I don't, I don't want to go back to it, but I am going to go back to it. We want to be like Adam and Eve. We want to be the God of our own life. We want to be the God of our little universe. It's tough to let go. It's challenging to let go. And your little cliche, let go and let God. And as true as that may be, it's easier said than done many times. John also tells us in the third chapter of 1 John verse 1, he said, Behold what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons and daughters of God. Amen. Therefore the world knows us not, because it knew Him not. God wants a relationship with you. And today if you're saved and you're born again, don't stop there. Have a relationship with Jesus. 
I asked the kids this morning, if we were, you know, we judge people many times by their outward experience or outward appearance. By their outward actions, we judge them. We say they're a nice person because they do this or they're a good person because they do this. But what if you and I were judged on a relationship with Jesus? I'm sure you've heard this. I've heard this preached before or heard this cliche before. If you were brought into court and, and, and charged as being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to prove you guilty? Your relation starts by knowing him. And the only way you know anybody is you spend time with him. I want to ask you this week, how much have you spent time with God? In prayer, in his word. Just meditating upon him, just loving him and letting him love on you. There's nothing wrong with letting God love upon you. Can you say amen? amen. I know many times we may feel and may be even told that we're unlovable. But God loves you in spite of yourself. Say amen. amen. Ain't you glad? Amen. Because many times I know in the natural I'm unlovable. I got one amen. Amen. <laughs> I know I can be difficult at times. But I know that God loves me. Amen. And I know that because he's never turned his back on me. Amen. I've had people to walk out of my life because of how I am. I've had people not, not want to do it. I'm talking about before I came to Jesus. Now still sometimes I'm difficult. Sometimes I still have tendencies to be honored. Can you say amen? Sure any how up out there. But he never walked away from me in all my struggles and all my difficulties and everything. God never walked away from me. Therefore, I know I can trust him. Can you say amen? amen. And if you were honest this morning, he's never walked away from you. Amen. Maybe you've walked away from him, but he's not walked away from you. And you must remember when God was faithful in your life. Have you ever thought about what God brought you out of? You ever thought about the pit that God found you in? You ever thought about how far God had to reach down to bring you out? Did you ever think about how much of the force of hell that were against you and God came and delivered you? Can you say amen? amen. He was faithful to give of himself. That's why I encourage you. I know many of you do. And I'm not real good at it, even though I, I tell you to do so. And I'm preaching to myself right now. It's good to keep a journal. To write down what God has done. It's good to write down and take notes during message. Not because I'm not because I'm I'm talking about anybody that you're listening to. Write down, take notes, and take a journal and, and write in that journal what God has done. Not only for you, what you see him do for others. Can you say amen? amen? Then you can look back on those. And you can reflect back in the word of God and how God has been faithful. It's one thing to read about how he was faithful to the saints of old and all through the, the gospel. It's another thing when you can read and see how he's been faithful to you. Can you say amen? amen. And I'm telling you folks, it's another thing when you can have those journals and you can leave a legacy of how God kept you and how God delivered you and how God saved you and how God kept your family when all hell was coming against you. When the doctors give you up to die. But God, can you say amen? amen? When they said you couldn't, you wasn't going to make it, you was going to lose everything you had. There was no hope. But God. When they were selling their home on the courthouse door. But God. God was faithful, can you say amen? When they said your child would never walk up. But here they are. When... Amen. I've been in those places. I've been where they said, we don't know what's wrong with your child. We don't know what we, we don't even know where to start to treat because we don't know what's wrong. How we know your child's in bad shape. And we don't even know where to start. But God. Amen. I know it's like to, to have women that come to me and, and tell me that they're not going to have, that the doctor said you'll never have children. But God, come on, somebody help me preach. I'm preaching better than you had men. Come on now. When you said you never have children, but here we are. Come on now. Having baby dedication, one right after the other. God is faithful and can be trusted. Can you say amen? amen. When, the, when the World Health Organization says when you get COVID, you're going to be a statistic. But here we are. Somebody say amen. amen. Every person that's had it in our midst, God has brought out 
Listen, that's not the same thing negative those that may have lost their life. And I'm telling you, God is faithful. Amen. Let me read something to you from Romans chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Now, I don't do this often, but I'm going to do it this morning. So, you know, that have mercy on me. I'm reading from the NIV. What if some are unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. King James says, God forbid. Again and again, God shows us that regardless of what we do or we don't do, He's faithful and we can depend on Him. Can you say amen? amen. You're not trying to do something to get God to do something. God did everything He's going to do at Calvary. Can you say amen? There's nothing else Jesus can do. He said it is finished. Come on now. And if it's finished, it's finished. The work is done. You and I just simply need to trust in what Jesus has already done. Amen. amen. Do we really trust in Him? Our God comes through for us every time. We sung that song. He is faithful. And I do believe we'll see it again. You might be down in the valley today, but bless God, you don't got to stay there. I don't know how long you got to be in that valley, but I believe as long as you hang on to the unchanging and trust in the hand of God, He'll bring you out. And the, hey, praise God, you will sing the praises of God again. Amen. Amen. Not one time have you, can you ever say that God has let you down. Now you might have been praying for things and God didn't seem to answer. I've heard, you know, that somebody, Garth Brooks or somebody like that, or I don't know, somebody wrote a song, Thank God for Unanswered Prayers. Basically, he must have been praying for one woman and got another. And pretty well likes the one he's got. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I guess it is a good thing that God don't answer some of our prayers. But I can tell you, when you pray this book, you're not going to get a no. Amen. Every promise of God is yes. And amen. That's a double stamp. Can you say amen? Well, as long as you're praying the promises of God, God will answer with a big old yes. Can you say amen? He's come through for us every single time. Every time. God doesn't just come through because you deserve it. He comes through because of who He is. Can you say amen? Not because of what we've done or who we are. It's because of His character. He can be trusted and He comes through. Remember when God's been faithful in your life. It's good when you hear the testimonies of those that have been through the Father and how God brought them through. Amen. We wonder why we go through things sometimes. God ain't doing it. No, sir. No, sir. No, ma'am. God ain't caught bringing trials and tests and tribulation and pain and discomfort and heartache. And I... But He causes all things to work together for good. Well, let's just don't stop there. To those that love Him. And those that are called according to His purpose. Amen. We like to claim the first part. But we don't talk much about the loving part. I never I never thought, and we could all, I could bring everybody here and give them the mic and they would all say, I never would have thought when this happened, God could use it this way. But since I'm the one that's got the mic right now, I never would have thought when I got shot that God would use it. But I'm going to tell you something. When you get a bunch of teenagers together and you tell them that you've been shot, their mouth just drops. They hinge on every word you got to say. And I can lead right into how God, how God delivered me. Because, you know, you don't hear everybody about somebody getting shot. I mean, you turn on the TV. So we look back. You can trust God because He's faithful. Another way is, is knowing how God feels about you. I mean, do you really understand that God adores you? He just don't love you. But He also likes you. But 
because you know we say well, you know we get all religion and say, well, you know I love them, but I don't like them. <laughs> Amen. We lost it. Well, some of you said that before. Well, you know I love them. I love them in the Lord, but I don't like them too much. Well, God not only loves you and adores you, but He also likes you. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Ain't you glad that He likes you? Amen. Hallelujah. In spite of yourself, He still likes you. And He still wants to be with you. So we often project how God feels about how we feel about ourselves. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with loving yourself. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Usually it's not a problem when we love ourselves, but for some people, they don't love themselves because all they've heard is how they're a failure and they'll never amount to nothing. They'll never be any good. And you'll be just like Uncle So-and-so and you'll be just like your grandfather and all that mess we've heard. That's why we have to renew our minds in this book. We need to find the in Him, of whom, through Him, by Him, the scriptures in the word and find out who you and I are in Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? And once again, maybe you've been belittled. Maybe you've been beat down by the words you've heard. And you really believe that you can't do nothing. I know there's, there's people, maybe you're sitting in this congregation this morning, women that believe they can't do nothing without a man in their life. Because you've been told that. Maybe there's a child here this morning that you've already believed you'll never amount to nothing because you've been told you're stupid. Maybe not by your parents, but maybe your classmates that you're ugly. I'm going to tell you something. Who are you and I to define what beauty is to begin with? You're made in the likeness and the image of God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. You know, I heard it best, but I don't even know who I heard it. I heard it years ago. I might, it might have been the guy I heard years ago, the evangel. God used him. He, he, he led Scott Bale to the Lord. Some of y'all don't even know who Scott Bale is. But anyway, Charles in charge. Happy to forget about it. Yeah. Anyway, and O.J. Simpson's uh, sister led her. To, I mean, you know, he knew some people. He was talking about all the vanity and beauty. I believe it was him. And he said, you know, you, you can be handsome. And the Bible does talk about people being fair and, you know, to look upon them. So we understand, we also scripture talk about that Jesus was nothing to be desired, nothing to look upon. So we understand there is a criteria somewhat in the scripture. But you can have all that. And being a car wreck and it all be taken away in the day's time. But what God deposits in you, when you know who you are in Him, no matter what the outward man, even though he just perished, the inward man can be renewed day by day by this book of finding out who you are in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? So put all those things that have been said about you and you believe about yourself. If it contradicts the word of God, trash it. Get your mind renewed to this book. Let me read to you from Isaiah 43 verse 1 then I'll skip down to verse 4. You and I must read the word of God and reread and reread and reread. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing and hearing and hearing, not hearing at one time, but we keep hearing and keep hearing and keep hearing. Can you say amen? amen. You'll never exhaust the word of God. Can you say amen? Isaiah 43, verse 1, then verse 4. But now, thus saith the Lord that created you. You think about that. You did not create yourself. God created you. O Jacob, and that he formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Amen. I mean, there's people in here that are that are particular with things that belong to them. They, they protect them. They make sure nothing happens to them. The people that collect things, they got trinkets. And I can remember my grandmother, she had a set of dishes, a depression glass. All you could do was look at them. Couldn't touch them. But you could look at them. 
She protected because they belonged to her and she didn't want anything to happen there. Think about how God, you belong to Him and He bought you with the price, the precious blood of Jesus. Do you not pray for one minute that God is not going to protect and take care of what belongs to Him? You can trust God in that matter. Verse 4 says, Thou was precious in my sight. Thou hast been our Lord, and I've loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. He loves you, folks. Very, very common scripture that's used at graduation time, but it's just not for great people graduating high school. Jeremiah 29, 11 is for you and I today. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Zephariah 3 and 17 says this. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. God is a mighty God. He rejoices over you and I with joy. We can rest in his love. See, God, as I said earlier, he don't even love you, but he likes you. He's in your corner. Now, I don't watch it as much as I used to, but I used to really love to watch boxing. You know, the boxer... He's only as good as the people that's in his corner. He can have all the skill, all the talent, all the muscle, all the brawn, and all the technique. But that only take him so far. It's the people in his corner that will dictate many times whether he wins or whether he loses. You've got his trainer who speaks words of life over him even though he's getting his head beat in. You got a man in that corner called a cut man. You're going to be wounded. But God's in your corner. He comes to bind up the wounded. See, that cut man goes to work immediately. I'm sealing that cut up. God's in your corner. Can you say amen? And I'm going to tell you something. God ain't never going to throw the towel in on you. Because he knows we've got the victory. Amen. Many times we've got to get back to the corner to find out what he's got to say. Amen. We may feel like we're getting beat. Can you say amen? You may feel like you're against the ropes this morning. You may feel like you don't have nothing left to give. Nothing else you can do. But God is in your corner saying you can do it. Hang on a little. You've got one more round in you. You've got, come on somebody. You've got one more round in you. You've got one more fight in you. Don't give up. You're too close. Because one day, God's going to throw our hand up in air. And declare that we're victors. Can you say amen? As a matter of fact, he's already done it. He said, you are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. He's the God that always causes us to triumph. Can you say amen? amen. He's in your corner. And he wants to walk with you daily. See, this trust muscle. That's what that trainer has to do. He first has to gain the trust of the person he's training I guess if you're going to talk about boxing, most everybody in here has heard of Rocky, right? You know, Rocky Three, which is the best, by the way. You know, all his career, he's been fighting Paula Creed in that camp until his trainer's gone. Now it comes in Apollo Creed's team to train him. Rocky says this one statement. Mickey never had me to do it this way. See, religion's had you doing things all your life a certain way. That trainer had to first gain his trust. 
or else he'd have never tried it because he'd been so used to doing it another way all his life. So you got your, your religion's only going to take you so far. Maybe you profess that you trust Jesus to take you to heaven. And you trust Jesus if he's forgiven your sins. But what about trusting him today for your daily life? Because I want to tell you, the road will get pulled from underneath you. There'll be times in life you're going to get bad news. There's going to be times you'll even make choices that you shouldn't have made. And you've got one or two choices at that time. You can panic and go into fix it mode yourself. Or you can trust Jesus. And the sooner you quit Jesus, trust Jesus, the quicker you can find rest. So the next time something happens, take a deep breath and put your full trust in Jesus. Amen. Trust Him with your whole heart. Lean not into your own understanding, but acknowledge Him. And He should direct your paths. God will never take you nowhere that is not the best for you. God will never lead you anywhere that doesn't produce the answers or the outcome that you desire. Your Father knows best for you today. He knows your every need before you even ask. But He still instructs us to ask. Not in the seek. Why would He do that? Because He wants a relationship with you. This time the worship team wants to come. Let's stand together this morning. As they get ready, I'm going to read verse 7 and 8 again in Proverbs 3. Be not wise as thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It should be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. It should be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. This altar's open. Maybe you've not fully committed to Jesus. Maybe you've not fully committed your heart to Him. People, whatever label you want on it, sanctification, whatever label you want to put it, I don't care. Just give your heart to Him. I love it. Remember when Chris read that poem or proverb about there was a certain room that was off limits? Maybe that's part of you today. Maybe there's a certain part. Maybe God's got a lot of it. But there's still areas that you you shut them out. Won't you come and surrender all to him today? As they say, this altar's open. Oh,